we start with a model number 3. The model number 3 basically consists of a continuation of the 3 phase transformer, little bit portion, then the DC generator. In the DC generator, we are studying the armature reaction and the commutation process. Then the, the third part is on the alternator that is you have to represent the, the alternator with the equivalent circuit diagram, armature reaction, leakage reactance, armature uh, reactance and synchronous reactance you have to define and you have to represent the, the alternator with the equivalent circuit diagram. These are the portions that is for the model number 3. That is, it is a transformer continued. That is the, it is the syllabus for the VTU and the direct current uh, generator in the armature reaction and the commutation process we are looking into and a synchronous generator, a small portion of the synchronous generator here we are studying about the different types of armature winding and winding factors, what is the effect of uh, winding factors on the EMF equation then how they are minimized in the harmonics in the, the waveform. Also we are seeing the what do you mean by synchronous reactance and the representation of the alternator that we are seeing in the model number 3. We start with the here the direct current generator that is armature reaction. Okay, we start with DC generator armature reaction. We have got armature reaction in the, the alternator also. It is a DC generator armature reaction. We have to look into here. We know that the armature reaction is nothing but it is an effect of the armature flux on the main flux. That what we are calling is the armature reaction. The armature reaction is nothing but it is an effect of the armature flux on the main flux. Then what are the causes of this the armature reaction in the machine that we are to look into. That is the effect of this armature reaction is it decreases the efficiency of the machine. Because of this uh, armature reaction, then the efficiency of the machine will be less. That we study, we will analyze this. And the second effect of the armature reaction is, it produces sparking at the brushes. In the case of the DC machine, uh, there, is a, there are two brushes, positive and negative brush. That is because of this armature reaction, there is a possibility of sparking at the, the brushes. That is the effect of armature reaction. The third effect is that it produces a demagnetizing effect on the main flux. That is, it is reducing the strength of the main flux. It is reducing the strength of the main flux. That is another cause of the armature reaction. The fourth one is that it reduces the EMF reduce. Ultimately, once the main flux is reducing because of the armature reaction, ultimately the induced EMF is proportional to the flux ultimately the EMF is also decreasing. Then the, in the case of the self excited generator sometimes because of this armature reaction they are failed to build up the EMF. They are not able to build up the, the voltage in the case of self excited generator. Means overall the effect of the armature reaction is it has got the main two effect one is called as the demagnetizing effect, the another one is called as the cross magnetizing effect. Means it is changing the direction of the main flux, at the same time it is reducing the, the magnitude of the main flux, thereby there is a decrease in the efficiency as well as the induced voltage. The same thing is given here, the effect of magnetic flux set up by the armature current, that is we know that what is the armature flux. That is, whenever the generator, DC generator is delivering the current. Where we are getting the current, where the power is generated, it is in the armature. Means, the armature is delivering the current. Means, the current which is flowing through the, the armature conductors is called as the armature current. We know that whenever there is a current is flowing in the conductor, it is producing its own magnetic flux. Therefore, there are armature conductors in that there is an armature current is flowing because of the armature current there is an armature flux then to generate the electricity we need the magnetic field then that is what we are calling is main flux 
that is what we are calling this main flux which is uh, produced by the, the field windings which is wound on the, the field system. There are two fluxes, one is the main flux which is responsible for generating the electricity in the generator. The another flux is the armature flux that is once there is a generated voltage in the armature conductors, there is a current is delivered to the load. Whenever there is a current is flowing in the armature conductor, it is producing its own magnetic flux. That what we are calling is the armature flux. Therefore, there are two fluxes. One is main flux, the other one is armature flux. That is the effect of this armature flux on the main flux, what we are calling is the armature reaction. The effect of magnetic field set up by armature current on the distribution of the flux under the main poles of the generator, that what we are calling is the armature reaction. There are two important effects, that is the one I told you that it is a demagnetizing effect, the armature magnetic field has two effects mainly, one is a demagnetized, means it is reducing the main flux produced by the field binding. It demagnetizes or weakens the main flux and the second, second effect is it cross magnetizing or distort it. That is the effect of the armature reaction is that it is reducing the, the strength of the main flux at the same time it is distorting the, the main flux. These are the two effects because of the, the armature reaction. Then before looking into the, the armature reaction in detail, how exactly there is a demagnetizing in this stage place, how exactly there is a cross magnetizing in this stage place, some of the technology relating to the armature reaction that we will study. The first, the definition what I am doing is the polar axis. The polar axis is nothing but which is the line joining the center of N and S pole. If you are joining the line between N and S, then it is called as the polar axis. That is a polar axis in nothing but which is a line joining the center of N pole to center of the S pole. Then geometrical neutral axis. It is also in short it is represented as GNA. In short it is called as GNA that is ge geometrical neutral axis. The geoma geometrical neutral axis is nothing but it is perpendicular to polar axis. It is a perpendicular to polar axis that what we call it is geometrical neutral axis. That is a polar axis is nothing but it is a line joining the center of N pole to center of S pole. Geometrical neutral axis is nothing but it is an axis which is perpendicular to polar axis. What is the importance of this polar axis geometric uh, GNA MNA that we study step by step. Then the third axis that what we are defining here is magnetic neutral axis that is MNA. That may be defined as the axis along which no EMF is produced. That is we are defining a one axis such that in that particular axis there is no induced EMF. What is that axis? Where there is no induced voltages, that is when the flux is moving parallel to the coil, that particular axis, whatever we call is magnetic neutral axis. As such, the coil is not cutting the magnetic flux. Means when if the axis which is perpendicular to the, the flux, that what we are calling is magnetic neutral axis. That is the axis which is perpendicular to lines of forces of the magnetic flux in which there is no induced voltage that axis is called as magnetic, magnetic neutral axis. That is why it is defined as it may be defined as the axis along which no EMF is produced in the armature conductors because they move parallel to the lines of the flux or the MNA or MNA is the axis which is perpendicular to flux passing through the armature. The same thing I told you that is it is an axis which is perpendicular to the flux passing through the armature. That axis is called as magnetic neutral axis. 
that is first we will I will show you what is the polar axis. The axis which is joining N and S is called as polar axis. Okay, which is the line joining the center of M to S1. Therefore, the line which is joining between N and S is called as a polar axis. Then geometrical neutral axis, which is line perpendicular to polar axis. It is a polar axis perpendicular to this is called as geometrical neutral axis. That is that is what I am drawing here is it is geometrical neutral axis then the magnetic neutral axis may be defined as the axis along which no EMF is produced in the armature conductors because they move parallel to the lines of the flux or MMA that is the is the axis which is perpendicular to flux passing the, the armature that is for example, there is a lines of forces that I will show in the next figure what exactly what is my magnetic neutral axis. Okay. okay. Brushes are always placed along the magnetic neutral axis. That is, the brushes to get the sparkless electricity across the, the brushes, the brushes are always placed on the, the magnetic neutral axis. Hence, this axis is also called as the axis of commutation. It is also called as the axis of the commutation. That is, it is an axis which is the perpendicular to lines of force. That is, the magnetic lines. That what we are calling is the magnetic neutral axis or it is also called as axis of the commutation. Okay. With this background, just I want to show you the distribution of the flux. That is, I am considering here the DC generator is consist of two parts. One is the stationary part. In the case of the DC generator, stationary part is the field system and the armature is rotated. Okay. Then you are exciting the field winding in the stator. That is what it is, it is doing. It is producing the magnetic flux. And the rotating part is the armature in which we are placing the, the number of conductors on in which there is an induced voltage in the armature conductors. Then we we'll, we are talking about two different fluxes. One is called as the main flux. How the main flux is produced? It is a flux is produced by because of the, the field system. Now I am timing that is what I am writing here is the flux distribution, the flux distribution of a bipolar generator when there is no current in the armature conductor. There is no current is flowing the armature conductors, just I am exciting the field system, then I will show you the lines of the magnetic fluxes here. See here, I have got N and S. These magnetic fluxes are produced by exciting the, the field bending here. Means there is a flux is producing from N to S. These are the lines of force. Okay. In which I have got a these are the two parts that is a stator and the, this is a rotor. Here there is no current because I am considering a flux distribution of the bipolar generator when there is no current in the armature conductors. Okay. Now the direction of this lines of force or the magnetic uh, lines is from N to S with the magnitude of that is you can see here it is a polar axis. This is here your geometric neutral axis which is perpendicular to the polar axis. In this case, as such there is no armature flux here. The flux is, is from N to S. Then perpendicular to lines of force there is a one more axis that what I am calling is magnetic neutral axis. You have to define two axes separately here. That is first is polar axis. It is from N to S. Perpendicular to polar axis, there is geometrical neutral axis. Then the third axis is it is a magnetical neutral axis which is perpendicular to magnetic flux. That is MNA. Here it is from here to here. Therefore, the magnetic neutral axis as well as ge geometric neutral axis in this particular case they are co coincide each other. Okay, the three two different identity. 
GNA is drawn because it is a perpendicular to polar axis. It is perpendicular to polar axis. Whereas the MNA is drawn, it is perpendicular to magnetic flux. Magnetic flux. In this case, both MNA and GNA they are coincide each other. Okay. Therefore, the main flux is represented by this factor EFM. That is from N to S. Then, in the second case, I will consider here the field or a flux set up by the armature conductors alone. In this case, there is no current in the armature conductors. However, there is a field bindings are excited, therefore, there is a main flux is produced. In the second case, what I am doing, the field points are not excited, however, there is a current is flowing the armature conductors. That case, I am considering. Then what is the flux produced by the, the armature conductors? I am seeing here the field or the flux set up by the armature conductors alone when the carrying current, the field coil is being unexcited. You can see here this uh, rotor and N and S. These N and S they are not producing the flux because I am telling that the field coil is being unexcited. Therefore, there is no main flux. However, there is a current is flowing in the, the armature conductors, therefore the current starts flowing here. Because of the flow of current in this armature conductors, they are producing its own magnetic fields. Okay, you can see here, the current which is flowing the towards the, the, the screen under N4 and it is away from the screen under the influence of S4, by that we can derive the direction of the magnetic flux. The direction of the magnetic flux is based on that is we can thumb is towards the, the direction of current and other fingers that show the, the direction of magnetic flux. Under N4, the current is flowing towards the, the screen, therefore we can hold your the thumb towards the screen so that other four fingers they represent the, the direction of magnetic flux. Similarly under S4 the current which is flowing away from the, the screen away from the screen and then you have to make your thumb towards you so that the other four fingers that is pointing towards the, the direction of the magnetic flux. The, this is how you are getting the, the direction of the magnetic flux. These fluxes are is because of the armature current which is flowing here. Okay. In the next session, then in the actual generator, the actual generator, the both armature flux, that is this armature flux is represented by Fe. That is they are acting in this direction, therefore it is represented by Fe. Therefore, in the case of the DC generator, you have what? Both the fluxes they are, the, they are there simultaneously they are acting. Because, because of the main flux there is a induced voltage. Because of there is a induced voltage it is delivering current. Therefore, the under actual condition both fluxes are simultaneously are existing in the generator. In that case how they are interacting each other that we will see in the next session.